Welcome. Thank you for choosing to listen to another Destiny Changing Word by David Entry from one of our Revival Seeking Youth Services. If you want to control your world, catch the word. Be blessed. As you are growing, you must, you must get to understand how things work in life. How many of you have had situations where you can't, you don't know why things are going like this in your life? And sometimes you have questions about your life and events or issues in your life which you don't really have answers. Yeah. Like some of you, you are in church and you don't know why you just like gossip. You just, you just. Some people really want to do the right thing, but you like food. Some people want to do the right thing, but you like girls. And most of these things happen because of upbringing conditions you grow up in. So then you become what you never planned to be, but the, the, your environment have conditioned you to be. But the advantage in being in church is that the word of God is also a conditioner. So the only way your life can be transformed is by the renewing of your mind via the word. Else you will never do well in marriage. You the way you are, no man can ever live with you if the word of God doesn't work with you, work on you. The way you are, you, no woman can ever live with you. So, when we come to church, okay, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. Let's read it out loud, please. NIV. Let's read it together. New Living Translation. All right, so from this particular test, you can tell that the treasure, oh, so the treasure is in trash. Earthen vessel, right? The last version. But we ourselves are what? Are what? No, 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 no. Are what like? We are not fragile. We are like fragile, fragile clay jars. Ah, jars. So, so the New King James says that we are. He uh, said, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. So, who is the vessels talking about? We are the vessels. Okay, we are the vessels. Say, I'm a vessel. I'm a vessel. Now, in um, Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty. But in a great, great house, what, yeah, let's read it, let's go. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor, and some for dishonor. So different types of vessels. Some vessels are for what? Honor. honor. Some vessels are for dishonor. So just like your house, you have vessel where you put your food you eat from, and you have another vessel you put your garbage in. That's for dishonor. Honor, vessels. Every house must have vessels, especially if it's a great house. Vessels, vessels, vessels. Okay, what does the next verse say? Therefore, oh, oh, it's all right. So the vessel is talking about human beings. You see, and remember, I said we are as we are earthen vessels with treasure in us, and so that. The, we, like, see, if I'm preaching and God is using me for miracles or some great things, I can't boast because I know I'm trash, a vessel of clay. So the vessel of clay means that it's, it's, I can be tired. So some of you, how many of you have, you, God has used you before? God has used you, you knew God used you to do something and you felt so good. And the next time you are lasting. 
And that's the conundrum of life. You just don't get it. Why? Why? Now that you are more spiritual, you think this thing has gone. No, no, you're just waiting on the side. You are a vessel, earthen vessel. You can break. So it doesn't matter what God is doing through you, you are still a vessel. So, um, so from what we just read, you can see that it says in God, God, God's house is a great house, right? Yeah, we are God's house. So it said in every great house, there are not only gold and silver vessels, but there are also clay vessels, wood and clay. Some for honor, some, look at the next verse. That's just telling us, us. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor. Ah, God will use you. Sanctify for the, you have to, the, the, the way you pre, pre, present yourself will determine the quality of vessel you are for God. But that's not the, my focus. My focus is that we are vessels. What are vessels meant for? To contain. Ah, so if you are a vessel, what are you meant to contain? That's where I'm going. So the more, we, whether you like it or not, you're a vessel. Say, I'm a vessel. I'm a vessel. So whether you like it or not, you're a vessel ready to contain. And something is being put inside you. So if God is not inside, demons are going to come inside. So we are all vessels. Now, if, how do you get filled with God? By feeding on his word. When you hear preaching, it's not something you are hearing. It's God, good preaching, you are downloading God into your system. So over a period of time, it's like medication. Most effective medication, or particularly good dieting, doesn't show up immediately. Over a period of time, you can tell that your body is, your, your mind is even healthier. Your, your memory is better. You feel agile in your body. Because over a period of time, you've been eating the right stuff. Over a period, you can't just say, I'm, I've, eaten, I've eaten it today, so I should feel. No, no. It takes time. In the same way, you have to take the time and the trouble to expose yourself to constantly hearing God's word and hearing God's word, and not only once, because faith comes by hearing and hearing. You are a vessel. Don't forget that. You are a vessel. Don't forget that. You are a vessel. Don't forget that. You are a vessel. Say, I'm a vessel. I'm a vessel. So then, there's so much inside you that must be replaced by God. So little by little, as you keep hearing the word of God and opening your heart and practicing it, God is downloading himself more into you day by day. Sometimes, it, not sometimes, it always takes a whole lifetime. So if you don't understand why you still have those tendencies, those unappreciable tendencies and those unwanted tendencies in your life, just keep, stay focused and keep going. Keep going. Some of the things, it will not leave you till you die. So that's why you have to be responsible and put systems to protect yourself. So if preachers have to protect themselves, if church leaders have to protect themselves, if people who have been in church for 10 years have to protect themselves, then you have to protect yourself. You can hang around everywhere. But the truth is that in your Christian work, most of you are struggling. You are struggling and you think you can't do this thing. Who told you? Get over yourself and push. You don't have a choice. You have to keep pushing. Okay. Listen, if you are in a river with sharks uh, or your boat was breaking and then you, know, you fell into it and you are tired of you are, you, you are tired but you have to do something. It's better when they come to eat you you are paddling. I don't, you don't become easy prey. Don't give up. But there are things you have to take. Thank you, Jesus. You have to take hard decisions. Hard decisions. Other than that, you compromise the brightness of your future. That's why you have to be very measured and careful when you see somebody's weakness, how you treat them. Though you have to see how you can be a blessing instead of 
gossiping and writing them off. No, no, that's not Christian. If anyone is overtaken by a fault, as I said the other time in um, Galatians 6, 1, those of you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, taking care of your own self. Restore. The sign of your spirituality is how you are, you are able to restore someone who has been overtaken by a fault. Please, it's not someone who is, who is not changed. That's not a fault. That's a, that's a lifestyle nature. But it says overtaken by a fault. So some of you, you are being overtaken by a fault. And I'm standing with you. But some of you else, too, it's not a fault. It's your lifestyle. You don't intend to change. You don't see anything wrong with it. That's not a fault. So do you, do you, are, you are not the one we are talking about. So your sign of spirituality is your ability to restore people. So, oh, look at that one. He's fornicating. You who are not fornicating, it doesn't mean you are spiritual until you are able to restore the one who is fornicating. That's, that's ah, you are a spiritual person. Then angels start clapping for you. Well, let me go back to my last point from the pillars of destiny. I just wanted to tell you that when the word of God is coming to you, God is forming in you. When the word of God is coming to you, God is forming in you. 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 And when God forms or gets formed in you, it's just a matter of time. You just like, you even like who you are. You, you look, if God can be formed in you and say, I hate myself. No. With time, you, so you just like what God has done for you. Look at what God has done in my life. That's, that's, that will be your story. Yeah. But it takes, it doesn't take, oh, you can't, you can't become a doctor uh, at the age of five. Why? Because it takes a long time. You have to go to finish uh, primary school, secondary school, and the uni, and the uni, your own is longer than the regular ones. The regular ones who just do two years, three years, and then they are done. No, 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 you can't do, you kill people. <laughs> Doesn't matter how gifted you are, you can't be permitted to practice until you have been training for seven years and more. So, what I'm trying to say is certain levels of achievement, certain levels of height, certain levels of attainment comes with time. And practice. You have to practice some things over and over. So you have to learn how to protect and shield yourself. There are some people, don't be picking their calls because you are too soft towards them. You know what I mean? You know, you, have, they, they, you are always on my mind. You are always on my mind. They are always on your mind. Uh, you haven't you have strong feelings for somebody? Look at how much food you ate yesterday. Today you eat again. <laughs> but you are not supposed to. Uh, when it comes to feeling, you don't have a choice. Practice is what you have a choice in. Feelings, you don't. You like color red. Were you trained to like it? You, you just, it, it just, it, it just. Some of you, when they give you lasagna, oh my goodness. <laughs> some of you is spaghetti. Some of you is, is, is uh, rice. You like rice like you were born in Lebanon. <laughs> some of you too. You have never eaten. It doesn't matter what you eat. It feels like you haven't eaten until you have eaten amala. <laughs> Pounded the arm. <laughs> Fufu or banku. <laughs> Rice and peas. Yeah. yeah. He said, oh, that one was starter. You haven't eaten. <laughs> and do you remember when you were not born again that you liked that food a lot? You've been born again and you still like it. So born again it didn't change your taste. What makes you think that being born again will change your taste for the type of girls you like or type of boys you like? Just that it gives you control. So that things that are sinful, you can say no to. Because of the life of God in you, it gives you the ability to walk away from what others can walk away from. 
That's, that's, that's the difference. So those of us who are born again, the truth is people who are not born again, they see you, they think you don't have feelings. They don't know. Your own is even sometimes wilder, more powerful, more potent. But then there's something else powerful that is at work in you, which is called the, the power of the Holy Spirit, the resurrection power. But that one only gets into effect when you stir it up. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Stir up the gift of God that is in you through the laying on of hands. Yeah. Stir it up. Spiritual things must be stirred up for them to be effective. He said, by the effectual working of his power. Ephesians chapter 3, I think verse 7 and verse 8. By the effectual working of his power. That which was, wherefore I was made the minister according to the gift of the grace of God which was given to me. By what? The effectual. The thing is working. It's producing. It's effective. But if you are not careful and you don't surround yourself with good environment and you don't fit yourself with the word of God and read your Bible listening to preaching, the thing will not be effectual. You have to stir it up for it to be effectual. So two of you, hands were laid on you. They said you all fell. Power. Afterwards, one week later, your own is like no one prayed for you. Why? Because the thing was not effectual. You have to stir it up. Stir up the gift of God that is you through the laying on of hands. Stir it up. After we lay hands on you, go and stir it up. When you go to when you go for lectures, after they teach, they finish the lectures, you go and do a research and, and read. So you have to stir it up. You didn't say I will stir it up for you. So you have to stir it up. Stay up, stay up. Timothy, I remind you to stay up. Maybe you forgot this, but stay it up. If you don't stir it up, you'll be steered away from destiny. Something inside you is, is, is steering you in the wrong direction. Everybody was born deformed. And so when you came, you don't walk straight. You walk like this. <laughs> Everybody, you walk straight. You don't walk straight. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you stir it up. Now you can walk straight. Now you can walk straight. But as soon as you stop stirring it up, it's coming. Up. It's coming. Uh -huh. And then they start sending you messages. The same guy again. The same girl again. How come the day you decided, now I'm going to do this thing fully and serve God, that's the day that same person who you have always liked in the past, that's the day, the day you met them, they called you and said, I know, you know I was meaning to call you. <laughs> Suddenly, now that you meant to be serious, it's like all the opportunities are coming. Can't you see that there's a mastermind behind it? Because it's afraid of your destiny. Now you are going in the right direction. So I knew those days that there are demons in girls, not all girls, but certain girls that would tempt me. So I don't know which one the devil is going to use to stop my destiny. So what I just make sure I stay away from. Because you don't know which one is Delilah. Yeah. You don't know which one is Delilah. Boys are also Delilah. Delilah is some, something, a person who the enemy will use to steal away your destiny in God. As I'm speaking right now, some of you, they already shaved your hair. Last week. Yeah. <laughs> your hair is your strength. Your strength. They shaved it. Now you can't sing in the choir. We are singing, but you know that you're, you are singing without hair. You are singing without hair. The anointing is gone. A cupboard. The glory has departed. Because you went to put your head on Delilah's lap. You went to rest. You are tired. I need encouragement. This week has been so, uh, listen, this week has been so stressful. I want to rest. Listen, when you are physically tired and emotionally drained, you are very vulnerable. When you are physically, especially those of you who want to be spiritual and do the work of God, don't underestimate your physical tiredness. When you are physically tired or in times of difficulty, when there's so much problems going on, you are also very vulnerable. Especially ladies. When there's so much emotionally, you, you can fall in love with somebody without knowing what's wrong with you. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know what I hate it. What's going on? But you are still going. Look, you want to be a Christian, you are sitting in church. Some of you are behaving like you don't know what I'm talking about, but you are the one I'm talking about. You are the one. I have a lot of things to preach, but I feel someone must tell somebody that you are not, you are not off. You can be better. 
You can do well. Just that if you don't take responsibility, this struggle will not end. This, and you compromise on your beauty, the beauty of your future. You compromise on your greatness. And Holy Ghost will not come and inject you with ability. Then, ah, yes, today I'm an iron man, iron woman. No, 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 you can't be iron. So as long as you have flesh and they hit you, you feel it. That means that you are just like everybody. Your advantage is the Holy Spirit. But most of us don't learn how to stay. That's why you have to come to church. Sometimes don't say, I'm, I'm not in the mood. You are not in the mood? Do you have to be in the mood to go to work? Do you have to be in the mood to write an exam? Why would you write the exam even though you hate it? When I was in secondary school, when they announced that, you know, sometimes the lecturers will say, the teachers or masters will say, we want to do some sudden exam next week. People, oh no! I never understood why. Why are you afraid of the exam? Because I used to be one of the top, you know. Some of you are jealous. You couldn't pass exams. <laughs> yeah. But when there's an exam, you don't have a choice. You have to prepare. So you don't, you see, most people, in, uh, particularly in this generation, and particularly in our generation and in our, in where we are, yeah. You just, you do things because it makes me happy. You are, you are a baby. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. So you are not writing an exam. I'm not happy, so I'm not going to work. I'm not happy, so I won't work. I'm not, hey, get over that pediatric kinds of thinking. I'm helping somebody not to be a failure. Because failure is not an event. It's a mindset that generates an approach to life, an approach to events, an approach to situations. You will not fail. You don't say the amen. amen. You've struggled enough. So anyway, point number one, the what? Pil pillars of destiny, the love for God. Number two, faith in God. Number three, mentorship. Number four, honor. honor. Number five, philosophy of life. Number six, how you treat, oh, this is a nice one. I, like, I really like that one. Number, that's number six. Number seven. Number seven. Be merciful. Number seven. Some of us are so mean. Some of you don't know how to forgive. Anyone who crosses you, you will never forgive them. You will also never be forgiven. Even God won't forgive you. Can you imagine? God does not forgive people who don't forgive. Ha! It's serious. It's in your Bible. God doesn't, this is a nice tweet, tweetable one. God, even God, cannot, does not forgive people who don't forgive. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14. Let's read it. If you forgive men, and this is the last, his, after teaching them how to pray, that's the comment he added. Do you understand? He said, when you pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, I love you, Lord. Like, you, know. you think when he finished, he says that, so if you glorify God, God will glorify you. No. Then look at it. Look at verse, verse 13. And do not, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Don't you think you should comment on how you, when you glorify God, it will be so nice to you. Look at the next statement. For if you forgive men their trespass, your heavenly Father will forgive you. His comment on prayer is forgiveness. You invalidate the efficacy of your prayer if you walk in unforgiveness. Your prayers cease to work if you don't learn to forgive. 
In fact, in Matthew chapter 18, Jesus told them a story about somebody who was owed money by a neighbor. And then he went and told the neighbor. And he was also owing a king. Those days, if you owe somebody, like the way bailiff can come in your house, those, those days you, they'll throw you into prison. So if you are owing me and you can't pay, I can come and arrest you and put you in prison until you pay. Before then, years gone, far before then, that one is even worse. If your mother is owing, the bank doesn't pay, they can come and catch you. <laughs> yeah. They come and, that's why Elisha did the miracle for the man, oh, yes. the woman. He said, my husband is dead, and he was, he's a good man, holy man, but I couldn't pay his debts. Now he's dead. So they are coming to take my sons as collateral. Huh? And the prophet said, oh, no, no. Get some vessels. Yeah. I said, okay, no, 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 let's read it. You want to know the story? It's a nice story. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet cried out to Elisha, saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. Oh, so you can fear God and pay, uh, not pass his ammo. Uh, yeah. Because he feared the Lord, but he died in debt. Your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. Why? Because their father was owing before he died and he couldn't pay. The widow can pay. So thank God the father was a son of the prophet. Who is your father? Yeah. It's important to have a father. In times of crisis, who fathers you is what you can cash in on. And um, the next verse. So Elijah said, what do you have? Tell me. Oh, so what shall I do for you? Tell me. What do you have in your house? And she said, your maids don't have nothing but, you remember that, that word? We are just vessel. Say, so, ah, if God, God can find vessel, he can do anything with the vessel. So bring the vessel and go and borrow oil. Go listen to the preacher. Listen to the pastor. The oil that is coming, pour it into your vessel. Get as much oil as possible. Borrow vessels and pour oil into the vessel. And so the more vessels he called, he created room. The oil never runs dry until you, you cease to become a vessel. When the vessel finished, the oil ran out. And he said, now go and sell it and pay your debt. So those days, if you are owing, it wasn't a good thing. They can come and collect your, um, your children. And so in the time of Jesus, this man was owing the king, Matthew chapter 18, and they said, hey, you have not paid. He said, please forgive me. Oh, forgive me. I can't pay. I don't know. I've lost my job. <laughs> oh. Master, have patience with me. I'll pay you all. And then what happened? And the master said to, the, the, the master of that sermon was moved with compassion. Say Compassion. compassion. He was moved with compassion. He felt for him and released him and forgave him his debt. Forgave him his debt. Ah, forgive him. And the same man, after your fornication and pornography, you, God has not striked you. And you are busy saying this. I will never forgive him. Hey! God will reactivate your forgotten sins. To bring them to the to light again, yeah. So this master, the, uh, then the master of the servant was moved. Let us nice verse. But the servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. Okay, go to the previous verse and let's see how much he was owing. Verse twenty-five or so. Um, how how much was he owing? 10,000 talents, so 10,000 pounds, and found someone who owed him how much? Denarii, 100 denarii, 100 uh, pence, so one pound. And what did he do? 100, and he laid hands on him. He said, ha, you! You see, I was thinking about this, but it makes sense. Because if this guy had paid him, he wouldn't have been in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> he should have paid me now, you see. 
You see what happened to me? I was almost thrown in prison. Pay me the money. So, kind of, he might have a justifi- justification. But then, because he had been forgiven, his justification not to forgive had been taken away from him. And he lays hands on him and took him by the throat. Hey, hell, this truth. You come here. Pull him. Come. This guy is strong. It looks like you. It's somebody like you. Eh? <laughs> by the truth. And uh, saying, pay me what you owe. Look at the next verse. So his fellow servant fell down. The way he also fell down. The same thing somebody did to him. Fell down at his feet and, be, and, and begged him, saying, have patience with me. I will pay you. Is that not what he said? Yeah. You are asking God to forgive you. God, please don't let me fail. Don't let them catch me. But you are busy trying to go in to expose somebody. I'll pay you all. And what happened? Look at the next verse. Are you learning something at all? And he will not. But he went and threw him into prison. So he paid the debt. Go! But how would I pay if I'm in prison? Lock the door. You know the prison door. That thing. Bang! Bang! Oh. He said, please. please. But he said, people are always watching you. People are always observing you. When you're upset, when someone steps on your toe, people are watching the way you are behaving. They may not tell you we are watching, but you are, you, are, you, are, you are under observation or surveillance. People are watching you without even realizing that that's what they are. Because they are learning you. They are learning you to see how you behave. And people saw him, they were very disappointed. They went to the king and said, sir, they went to his man. When the, oh, his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very grieved. Ah, this guy is wicked. And came and told the master all that had been done. The master said, really? So I'm a fool for forgiving him. He put someone in prison. The master, after he, uh, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked, say wicked. wicked. Say wicked. wicked. Do you look like the one they are talking about? Some of you, you wish we tell you you're an angel, but your behavior, your unforgiving heart, makes you, you're a wicked man, you. You, I'm talking to you. You're a wicked girl, you, you. You, the way you can't forgive this guy. You can't forgive uh, some guys. I don't know whether you can forgive them, but. <laughs> <laughs> you can't forgive people. <laughs> and you have vowed that I will, you know, those who say this, I will never forgive this person. You know, I'm talking to you. I will never forgive him. I will never forgive her. I will never forgive this girl. I will never forgive my sister. That's even worse. Your own sister, your own brother. Yeah, I know what you did was not nice. You told her something, went and told your mother and put you into trouble. Your very good friend, very good friend, cheated with your man. Stop me at the bar. Hey, what he has done to me, she has taken something away from me. Uh, Pastor, I don't know what I can never, I, I swear, I swear, I swear, I swear, I swear on my grandfather's grave. I would never, I would never, I would never forgive this one. Listen, I understand. God, the wound is real. So sometimes when we talk like this, it makes it look like your, your pain is not real. It's real. But that's why you have to stay out the gifts. Because you, you are running at a risk. You are running a risk. Okay, why should I, no, I, I, why should I let go? Because you, you are also a prisoner. Your freedom is a function of who you free. If you fail to set somebody free, you will also not be set free. You will continue failing. So, look at the text again. Then his master, after he had heard, called him and said, you wicked servant, I forgive you all the debts because you begged me. That's why some of us don't know how to beg. That leads me to my last point. Wow. You are not humble. You are not humble. Even when you are wrong, you want to defend and argue. You are not humble. That's why you can't join a department and stay there. Every department you join is only for one month. Yeah, the longest. One month, then you are off. You can't humble yourself. Pride is blocking all your chances of rising. Somebody said the 
the gifts of grace, God's gifts are on shelves, one below the other, not one on top of. So when you pick the first gift, to assess the next gift, you have to humble yourself, go down, you can pick more gifts. The lower you go, you are picking more gifts. The lower you go, you are picking more gifts. Some people are so tall, God cannot put crown to their head because they are so tall. You can't even reach their head and put a crown on their head. He said, you begged me. You begged me. You begged me. And I, you wiki server, you begged me. The next verse, 30. This, that's, that's where I'm going, 33. Shall we all read it out together? He said, should you? You should. You don't have a choice. Oh, the way I feel. Hey, 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 hey. You don't know what others have also felt about you. Look at the next verse. And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturous until he should pay. What does the next verse say? This is not good. This is not good. It's not good news for you. Since you are so hurt and you can't let go, this scripture is working against you. Let's read it out together. He said he would go and throw you in prison. Is it possible that an aspect of your life is in prison? Yeah. You want to marry? Yeah. It might not come. You have been in prison because of what you did. It should be held against you. But God decided I will forgive you. But you said you won't let someone go. Okay, then you stay in prison. Your marital prosperity breakthrough might never show up. Sometimes your health. Sometimes your career. Sometimes your family life. Sometimes your finances. Wherever. You won't be in prison in the name of Jesus. Amen. So compassion is a very powerful thing. Humility and having mercy on people. People will hurt you, but it's a test to see whether you're ready for the next day. Face. It's a test. Even in church, somebody has said to you, you feel like, no, this usher, I don't like it. For some reason, this usher doesn't like me. For some reason, this choir doesn't like me. For some reason, this, somebody doesn't like me. I, I, I just want to be by myself. Hey! Grow up. You are being tested. You have been, everybody's faith will be tested. Everybody's love will be tested. Everybody's authenticity will be tested. And everybody's genuineness will be tested. Some of you, this is your best training grounds for good marriage. Your best training ground for good marriage. Because the way you are, you fight with everybody. Yeah. No, look, your family. And some of you are a lone child. So you don't know how to share with anybody. It's a problem. It's a problem. You don't know how to share with anybody. When anybody marries you, they'll make a mistake. Unless the word of God has passed through you and passed through you and you have now been able to accommodate the system of being with others, they step on your toe and it doesn't matter. It matters, but you learn to overcome it and move on and still relate with them. Forgive others. And then finally, learn how to beg. Humble yourself. Learn, learn, humble yourself. Humble. Some of us are too proud. Especially... No, I mean, everybody shouldn't be proud. But if you haven't achieved anything, why are you proud? What are you proud of? There's no achievement. There's no achievement. Pride makes you less beautiful. Many very pretty girls don't tend to get men to stay around them because of pride. Many pretty girls don't get men to stay with them because of pride. It has entered everybody. Hey, girl. And you, are, you keep getting attention, so it has entered your head. And anyone who comes to you can't stay with you because you still feel you are creme de la creme, but you didn't know that you are just as ordinary as anybody. And they will move on to get someone who they feel this is a human being I can relate to. But this mannequin, I can't. Humility, you want to protect your destiny? Some jobs you won't be able to get if you are not humble. There are some of you know aunties in working in some place. She's been working there 25 years. They have never given her one promotion because of her attitude. Proud. Especially the council, uh, local government office. <laughs> local authority, yeah. Local authority. People can work there for 30 years and no promotion. 
And anytime there is grievance, they are the one who lead the workers. We are not happy. They challenge their bosses. And they say, no one promotes them. You are at a, in a company. You team up with people. You say, me, I don't like uh, uh, what is not fair. So when someone is not being treated well, I'll fight for them. Look at where it has left you. You are joining the employee to fight the employer. You, the employer has the power to promote you. They won't promote you. The employee can't promote you. Rather, they'll go behind your back and go and collect the problem. And me, I don't even know why she has made her, my problem her problem. But me, I'm fine. I'm fine. Is there anything you want me to do? That's why I'm here. And they'll keep promoting them. Unfortunately, some of us, the way you were raised and the conditions at home, you don't take instruction from anybody. You don't know how to humble yourself. It is going to hurt your destiny. So one of the pillars of destiny is humility. One scripture I can add to that and end quickly. God gives grace to the humble, but resists the proud. In 1 Peter and in James. 1 Peter chapter, 1 Peter chapter 4, 5. He said, likewise, ye young, younger people, submit yourself to the elders. Yes, all of you be submissive one to another. Everybody, submit to somebody. Don't say, who does he think he is? Uh, all of you, whether you are a leader or you are not a leader, submit to one another. And be, can you imagine? It says that be clothed with humility. When they see you, it's your clothing they see first. Wow. If you are wearing a colorful masquerade clothing, we see, ah, some of you, when we see you, it's your eyelashes first because it's so long, longer than your hair. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice. He said, be clothed with humility. Wait. You are not born with your clothes, were you? No. No. So there are certain levels of humility you are not born with. Wait. Go get it. Go and buy it. You've been going to Zara. Spending time in Zara. Sell fridges. Sell fridges, yeah, they don't sell fridge. <laughs> Spending time. Doing window shopping, Harrods. If I were you, I would do proper shopping to get clothes of humility. Yes. If you start with the window clothes, you're thinking about, okay, this is how I have to cover, I have to carry myself. Do rehearsal. That's window shopping. And then when situations come, someone treats you in a way or speaks to you in a way that, who does, why? And you remember humility. Now we've done, that's where we will know. And when you think, you see, humility is not about what you think about yourself. It's what people know about you. So some people, they've Pat themselves, pat themselves on the back. You know me, I'm very humble. Hey, anyone who says that statement is a clear sign of pride. Me, I'm very humble, you know. Me, I'm very humble. Ah, you are very proud. No clearer sign of pride than to say you are humble. Humility is important. It's important for the journey of greatness. He says, says, submit yourself one to another and clothe yourself in me. For why? Why should you do that? Let's read that. Why should you do that? I can't hear you. One day, my washing machine, I didn't remove some things, and it was shaking. It was, I couldn't turn it off. I went to sit on the floor to push it to the, to, to stop. I couldn't, I couldn't resist it. It was, but at least I managed to move, stop it from coming from under the worktop. Yeah. I could do that to a washing machine. How much more God? Say he will resist you. You want to come out from a problem? No, he resist. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. He says, take it, take it, take it. Oh, God, is enough. Yeah, add it, add it. In James chapter 4, the same thing. But he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Say, Lord... Lift up your right hand. Say, Lord. You see, some people are not humble enough to even lift up their right hand. That, that's, the, that's the thing. You see, but we are, we are all growing, okay? Don't worry. It's showing, but uh, yeah, it's... It lift up your right hand! <laughs> <laughs> say, Lord, Lord. Help me to be humble. Because I know you resist the proud, but you give grace to the humble. I receive grace to be humble. To pass every test of humility. In Jesus' name. Amen. Did you receive something? God bless you for listening to this powerful message. May the power of God be evident in your life. 
don't forget to like and subscribe to Carriage Church on YouTube and listen to more messages from David Entry on all relevant streaming platforms. You can also connect with David Entry and our youth ministry at Caris Phase 2 on Instagram and TikTok and at Caris on Campus on Snapchat so you are always up to date. Be blessed.